Hello everyone, Curtis White here from the Cannondale CyclocrossWorld.com team. We are at the Super Prestige in Merksplas in Belgium, and I'd like to take you through a lap of the course. Now today there's been a mix of light rain and mist all day, and it doesn't seem like the course would get really heavy with mud quite yet, but it certainly would be slick. Now I'm getting on the course here right after the finish and right on turn one, but I wouldn't quite call this the whole shot yet. This is still kind of wide open, hard packed, and still an opportunity to move up. Now I'm starting my pre-ride on the Challenge Baby Limus tires with 20 PSI in the front and 21 in the rear. And I'll have my mechanic, Mike Barry, on the side of the course with other tire options like a Limus and a gun pump to change pressures. So this is what I would call the whole shot. We're coming up on a ditch, we got a pump through and then a sharp bottleneck to the left. Now be careful because under this mud there's a bit of a curve which could be a bit of an opportunity to potentially flat on. But as we're coming up to pit one, we'll see two fast wheels that we're coming up on. On the left is Ryan Kemp, the current world champion of the under 23s. And on the right, Toon van der Bosch, the Belgian under 23 national champion. So over the next few corners, pay attention to Ryan Kemp's rear wheel. You'll see him sliding around a little bit. That's not due to a lack of handling skills, but rather he's on a faster mid-range tire just to see what he can get away with in some of these slick corners. There's a lot of fast straightaways and he doesn't want to give up a lot of rolling resistance here with a heavier tire. But it's going to be slick and greasy out so he'll eventually move to a heavier tire and I too will go to a lower tire pressure. So after a blistering fast start and going by pit one in these last few ditches we're coming into the most technical part of the course in the woods. Here the course gets really narrow, there's barely any room to pass, so this is a section where there will be a lot of fighting for position. If you're well positioned in the group this is an area where you can dictate the pace, recover a little so you can keep your composure, and avoid being held up by other racers' mistakes. Now, a lot of these drops and off cambers, there's really only one line to follow. So if you slide out, the rest of the group slides out. Now here we have a little hump, there's a couple staple uh, trees in the middle of the course. And this little ride up here was pretty difficult earlier in the race, but tacked up a little bit more as things dried out. But again, we see another drop with really only one line to follow and another steep ride up off camber where you're really muscling the bike up. Now, if you're able to lead through this section and make it through all of these features cleanly, then it's an opportunity to recover. Now, we see the last big drop off here, a couple of roots that are being exposed, another tree in the middle of the course, and there's really only one line through here. Again, we see Ryan slide out a little bit, but again, he's on a faster tire trying to see what he can get away with traction-wise. Now, after these stairs, we have a sharp turn and a drop into this next run-up, and with the next drop causing a lot of havoc in both the men's and women's races. During the pre-ride, there was a little bit of traffic on the top of this drop just because a lot of racers wanted to really carefully inspect this big drop, which played a critical part in the course. The safest way to get down was running and remounting on the pavement, but the fastest way was cutting across left to right across the off camber. If you didn't hit it just right, there was a big divot right at the bottom that caused a lot of unfortunate crashes. The accordion effect is really amplified on this course with there being so much single track through the woods. So if you're coming onto this pavement leading your group, it's a good chance to open up a gap or have an advantage. Now we have one last jet up off the pavement and a small drop here before really leaving the woods area. One thing we have to look out for as the race continues on and the course wears down is that there are a lot of small rocks and roots slowly getting exposed that could potentially crack a rim or flat a tubular. Now we're leaving this wood section, coming on the pavement again, and we're kind of sweeping wide on a lot of these greasy turns, adjusting our lines. Now watch out for this hole on the inside of this, the apex of that corner definitely don't want your front wheel falling in that. So again, coming wide through a lot of these corners, looking for the green part of the grass. Green means go, green is traction, kind of adjusting the lines and maintaining as much traction as we can before heading into the, one of the more pedaling heavy sections of the course. And we have a few straightaways coming up where passing is possible, but it's kind of tight. And if you're having to close any gaps in the technical woods area, it's a massive effort to go through this part of the course and closing gaps. Now coming in this left is a little tricky. We have a little hop here and the line eventually gets pushed out. But the conditions really make it so that it's an advantage to lead and dictate the pace through most of this course. Now we got a 180 right here with a nice little rut berman in there and it straightens back out. 
In about 100 meters, we have another little technical section. It's a single track off camber. It's really not all that difficult, but it's a little easy to slide out on towards the end and near impossible to pass on. So we'll see it's dropping in, holding a steady line. This little end part where you can put a foot down, but again, it's not that fast and impossible to pass on. Now we're coming by pit two, which I thought was the better side to pit on if you needed a clean bike. This side was a little bit slower of an approach and there was a better exit set up into the following corners. Here you see in the racing lane you have to go tape to tape all the way wide, whereas if you're coming out of the pit you can cut that corner a little bit sharper with a little bit more speed and right on a good traction patch. So these barriers up here were hoppable, but with the slickness and mud on the course it seemed like a little bit of a risk and running was just about as fast. See we have a speed limiter through this corner. Now we have a couple more greasy corners, left, right, another left, a couple of ruts are being burned in so you're not going to slide out totally. But we're coming into the last series feature on this course, which is a longer, heavier sand pit. We're going up over this mound, down 180 on the other side, back up, we're going to have to accelerate on the downhill to gain momentum coming into the sand pit. There's really two lines, you have a left and a right line. But once you're in the sand, it's all about being on top of the gear and letting the bike go where the sand wants to take you. See, if you lose your momentum, you're going to be on your feet running, trying to get through the sand as quick as possible and maybe losing the wheel. So from here, we're about 300 meters to the finish line with only a couple corners to go. It's really all about staying on top of the gear, maintaining your momentum and keeping traction through these last couple corners. Now we're approaching the last fly over here. Pretty easy to get up and over using this downhill for the last bit of recovery you'll get on the lap before sprinting to the finish. A couple more slick corners to go. You'll see Ryan Kemp's wheel again sliding out a little bit in front here. One thing to keep a heads up for is this last little drop, turning left, pull your front wheel up a little bit or else it'll catch you a little off guard. But again, a rut's forming on the outside of that corner. You're not going to slide out. We're coming into the last corner here, 180 right, up this bridge and you're on the start finish straight and that's the track. Overall we'll see that the terrain wasn't all that difficult but it's the conditions that make it all challenging and contributed to some really epic racing with both the women and the men. So I'm stopping here to see Mike up, up ahead having him lower my tire pressure a couple PSI. I hope you enjoyed this video thank you for watching keep an eye out for some more videos this season take care stay healthy and keep riding and we'll catch you soon.